I had when I was planning to run for the Senate, the most important one was when I sat down with Ann Wagner, who just come back from Luxembourg as the ambassador, and said, I want you to be the chairman of this campaign. And what a great job she did. Nobody alive has introduced me as many times as Ann Wagner has, or in as many places. Uh, and a lot of that 112 county victory was because of her great work, and the great work of all of you. I mean, you know, politics is the ultimate team sport. Uh, and uh, Ann mentioned that in the Senate leadership, I'm in the strategy and uh, policy making meetings. The truth is, in the minority, we really don't have very many of those meetings. We have a meeting every week. Some week we have two or three meetings, but mostly it's to try to figure out how we can embarrass Harry Reid into bringing things to the floor. And so far we've not been very good at that. You know, the Senate hasn't passed a budget in three years. This is the annually required by law budget. That law went on the books in 1974, and every year from 1974 until three years ago, the Senate passed a budget. It was starting three years ago, Senator Reid decided, you know, it's really sort of foolish for us to tell people what we're for. And I guess if you were for what they're for, it really would be pretty foolish to tell people <laughs> what you're for. And a couple of weeks ago, he said the same thing about the appropriations bills. Well, you can't get the spending under control if you won't bring the appropriation bills to the floor. And a couple of weeks ago, at our leadership stakeout, we were doing some nonsense vote on just purely a political Let's make them look bad and us look not quite as bad. And I said, what we really ought to be doing are the budget and the appropriations bills. The House passed a budget. The Republican House passed a budget. The Republican House has passed already half of the appropriations bills. Why don't we pass it? So Senator Reid came in right after us to that same weekly meeting, and they asked him, and he said, well, really, it, it, I don't think we'll have any appropriations votes before the election. Now there's a reason when people don't want to tell you what they're for before the election. Uh, and the one, the one person in the United States... Punch back. ...is widely considered to be the most vulnerable senator in the United States of America. We are the eye of the storm, folks. You're going to get it done. Missourians aren't buying it. I give you our next United States Senator, Todd Aiken. just want to say thank you so much and thank you particularly for allowing me to be your congressman for a number of years. It's really been an honor and uh, you're, you're absolutely great. Thank you. Now, there's a, a lot of talk uh, at this time. People like to focus on, you know, what are these elections all about? And some people say the elections are about jobs, and you know jobs are really important. And some people say it's even bigger than jobs. It's about the whole economy. I'm on the budget committee with Ryan, and let me tell you, the economy is a very big deal. But I'd like to suggest to you that this election is about something even bigger than those two things. It's about something that I believe that every single one of you, just a factor in this room, it's very dear and dear to your heart, and that's the word freedom. This election is about freedom in America. Now, I think there's a couple of pretty obvious examples about the situation with freedom. One of them is that 71% of the people of our state said we don't want a health care system with the efficiency of the federal government and um, also the, uh, the compassion of the IRS. We don't want Obamacare. Deciding vote for it, I want to be the deciding.
deciding vote to repeal it. Now, why is that about freedom? Well, it's because the government's taking over one-sixth of the economy. How can you miss the freedom question here? You want the government running everything. That's what this is about. It's about taking back our freedom. Now, let's take a look at another area. Let's take a look at what Roy is just talking about. The fact that America has more energy just about than any of the other nations of the world. You know, Barack Obama said, I'm going to shut the coal industry down. He had an energy secretary that says he wants to crucify oil and gas. Now, I don't understand how you do that, but it wasn't a complimentary thing, obviously. And so, they're, they're really just a, a couple things standing between us and America exporting energy and the gas prices getting back down to where they were three years ago before, three plus years before Obama was in. And one of them is, of course, Obama. You gotta get rid of him. ourselves. 